So I am Vasiliki Pagliaraki. I am a postdoc researcher in the National Technical University of Athens in the laboratory of reinforced concrete and the laboratory of uh, uh, seismic uh, engineering. And uh, this uh, presentation regards uh, the um, uh, heritage buildings. And we have concentrated in uh, two cities, the city of uh, Gaziantep and the city of uh, Antakya. Uh, where we have uh, the, um, uh, these are two cities that are representative of uh, moderate intensity and um, rather high intensity. And um, uh, the presentation regards buildings in um, the historical center of uh, the two cities. And uh, based on the information we have gathered, we can uh, come to some, uh, we can provide some, uh, of course, preliminary conclusions. Uh, for the buildings that uh, we present, we have tried to take profit of the images we could find in the Google Street View, uh, where the buildings uh, are shown as they were before the earthquake, as well as uh, their surroundings. And uh, of course, more time and more work is needed for all of us in order to understand better what has happened there and uh, why the buildings um, some buildings have collapsed while other buildings uh, have uh, survived those uh, severe earthquakes. Let me start uh, the presentation with uh, two bridges we have seen, uh, with two bridges, nor Roman bridges. We have seen just one of them, uh, which is uh, in Adana near uh, the um, uh, airport. And uh, there the... Um, um uh, intensity of the earthquake was not very high and we have seen this roman bridge we, which had no damage at all and uh, then there is uh, this bridge uh, which is near andiyaman and um we did not manage to reach it because the street to go there uh, was um, destroyed but uh, we have seen from um, several um, uh, publications in uh, the internet that um, the bridge was not destroyed. Uh, then uh, let me uh, come to some um, uh, individual cultural heritage statues, such as uh, the castle in uh, Gaziantep. Uh, it's, uh, it was um, constructed in the no Roman era and uh, it has been the subject of uh, numerous interventions. And uh, we can see that uh, this was um, uh, the state of uh, the castle before the earthquake. And uh, this is the state uh, in which uh, we can see it uh, nowadays. And um, some more uh, pictures where we can see the um, uh, damages uh, of uh, uh, some walls, uh, the diagonal um, uh, cracks that uh, were created, as well as the out of plane failure uh, of the walls. And um, here, this is um, a mosque in uh, Gaziantep, uh, where um, it, there was a really high minaret, which uh, is no more um, in its place. And uh, this is the um, image of uh, the church of uh, St. Peter and Pavlos, uh, the Greek Orthodox uh, church, uh, which uh, was in Antakya. And uh, this is the state of uh, the church nowadays. We did not uh, visit, only some members of our team uh, have visited the, the church because it was uh, rather difficult to reach it. Uh, some uh, mosques in Antakya have been uh, destroyed, and uh, here we can see uh, the, the way in which uh, this, uh, this vault has been um, damaged and uh, cracked. And uh, in this case, uh, there was again a minaret which uh, had survived the previous earthquake, but uh, in this earthquake has been destroyed and um, it was uh, turned into pieces. And some more pictures from uh, the um, uh, damages of uh, the constructions uh, in the center of uh, Antakya in the old city and uh, from other um, mosques uh, that uh, were distracted 
even though uh, they are the buildings that are um, paid more attention in their construction. So let me say a few words about uh, the structural systems that we can meet in uh, the cities of uh, Gaziantep and Antakya. Uh, most of the buildings have uh, two or um, in rare cases, three stories. And uh, the masonry in the case of uh, Gaziantep has no external plaster, uh, while it is plastered in uh, almost all the buildings in Antakya. Uh, all the floors uh, are made of timber uh, as well as the roof, uh, unless they are um, they have been um, uh, they have they have been. Uh, 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 restored uh, in uh, some place, uh, in some uh, age, or um, uh, replaced. Uh, so in Antakya, we see a system uh, which um, is uh, typical of this region. Uh, there is the ground floor which is uh, constructed with stone masonry, while the upper floors are uh, constructed with uh, timber framed masonry, and um, they are also extruding as uh, already described by Professor Thanopoulos, and uh, they don't have the same dimensions as the ground floor. Um, and uh, some buildings are um, made of uh, non-fired bricks. Uh, we have seen this uh, in Antakya in the upper floors of some buildings that were destroyed, uh, or uh, in uh, Gaziant in uh, sorry in uh, Islahiye, where we have seen also buildings that were completely made out of uh, adobe, uh, non-fired bricks. And uh, another element which is interesting is uh, the use of uh, these um, uh, balconies of these um, extruding parts, uh, which are made, uh, which are supported by timber beams in the form of uh, cantilevers. Uh, so the construction typology of masonry, um, we have uh, in most cases three leaf masonry, and in very rare cases we have two leaf. There is no use of uh, header stones uh, in order to connect uh, the external leaves. And um, the, the part which is uh, between the two outer leaves uh, is constructed with uh, rubble masonry, uh, which um, uh, uses uh, lime or earthen mortar. And um, in Antakya, we have uh, seen also the combination of stone and adobe masonry in the upper floor for the construction of the upper floor. And uh, here we can see a system that um, is very typical uh, for, uh, in general, for uh, the heritage structures for the old masonry buildings. Uh, we have this uh, three-leaf uh, masonry, uh, which uh, is very vulnerable and uh, it should be uh, protected uh, uh, with uh, adequate um, methods of uh, uh, restoration and uh, of strengthening. And uh, we can see that uh, it is, uh, in many cases, uh, subject to out-of-plane uh, uh, failure. And um, it is interesting to see that uh, there is another uh, system which is typical for, um, for some of the buildings in Antakya, and it is met also in uh, uh, Plomari and Vrisa in uh, Lesbos, in buildings uh, that uh, have been damaged during the 2017 earthquake uh, in those island, in, in this island. And uh, we can see that uh, there is a three-leaf masonry. The external leaf is made of uh, rubble stone masonry. And uh, there is an internal leaf which is made of timber-framed masonry. And also in this case, there is no transverse connection. So the two parts of the masonry uh, are acting independently. The typical failures we have met uh, are um, really uh, the ones that we were expecting. 
for uh, masonry that is subjected to in-plane actions, so to in-plane shear. And we have seen uh, different, uh, of course, uh, different uh, damage grades. Uh, so we have seen uh, cases of um, uh, cracks uh, that were diagonal or bidiagonal, and uh, the opening of the cracks uh, was rather limited. And we have seen other cases where the crack was of uh, a rather big um, amplitude, and uh, it led also to the complete collapse, to the complete destruction, and to the collapse of uh, the piers, of the masonry piers. Um, another damage which was um, seen in many cases, it's uh, the damage in out of plane, uh, where we have in many cases uh, the damage of the one leaf of masonry. And, um, or we have the out of plane movement of the whole wall. Uh, in some cases, we have the um, uh, collapse of the whole wall. And uh, this is the, the effect of the openings which are close to the corners of the buildings. And there we have a combination of in-plane and of out-of-plane actions. Uh, this, uh, this part of, um, of the structure is subjected to both in-plane and out-of-plane actions. And on the other hand, we have also significant variation of uh, the axial load due to the cycling of um, the forces uh, applied. And we can see many cases where the, the corner is lost. And this is the case in Antakya. Also in uh, Gaziantep, we have seen similar failures. And uh, this is seen also in uh, more um, modern, let's say, structures. Uh, for example, it has been seen in Christ Church in uh, 2011. And uh, what I would like to focus on uh, here is uh, the, um, are the inadequate interventions and the use of uh, the reinforced concrete without paying attention to the, to the masonry. Uh, in many cases, the, the original timber roof is replaced by a reinforced concrete slab in order to improve. And the scope of this uh, replacement is the improvement of the diaphragm action. But this causes an addition of a significant mass, which is in most cases not connected to the masonry walls, which are not strengthened. So this may have catastrophic results. For example, in this case, a uh, whole story is lost. And um, here we can see uh, the, the building as it was uh, before the earthquake and uh, in its uh, uh, present uh, situation and um, in its present state. And we can see here a concrete and uh, reinforced concrete element. Uh, which of course was added for the reinforcement. And here we can see the Protestant church in Antakya. And uh, this is um, the state in which we have seen it today. And again, we can see uh, reinforced concrete elements. Uh, another example, um, this um, is a building, a two-story building. Um, I guess that uh, both floors were made of uh, masonry and uh, there was the addition of um, a reinforced concrete slab that caused uh, the um, uh, damage and uh, the failure of uh, the second of the first floor uh, of uh, the building. And in this case, uh, this is an old uh, hotel uh, where there is a reinforced uh, concrete tie beam that was constructed in the top of the masonry. And um, it seems also that there was some uh, mortar used as a filling material over the vaults. Uh, but in this case, um, the um, RC tie beam uh, lies only on the inner part on the inner leaf of the masonry. 
and uh, it offers no connection of uh, the two leaves of the two external leaves or the three leaves of uh, of this masonry so it um, does not really help the um, improvement of uh, the performance of uh, the masonry so as um, Professor Thanopoulos uh, has said, um, in many cases, there were um, some uh, uh, interventions to these uh, uh, buildings uh, that um, were, let's say, the traditional ones. And uh, there was the use of uh, steel beams or uh, reinforced uh, concrete um, in um, or reinforced uh, concrete beams, uh, but uh, this did not in every case improve their behavior. The behavior of uh, the traditional system was in many cases quite good. And uh, although um, we are not sure how the whole, the whole city center behaved, uh, we can see that uh, there are some buildings that um, have uh, survived with uh, damages that we are not sure if uh, those buildings can be preserved. But we can assume that their survival offered life protection to the, to the inhabitants. And this is one of the most important features of uh, the um, seismic uh, design. And um, as long as it regards a small number of adobe buildings uh, that are still in use in uh, Isla Hige, we have seen uh, that there were some light damages. Um, nevertheless, we have seen only uh, partial failures. And uh, of course, in this case, we are not sure if uh, the restoration of the historic centers in uh, general will be possible with all this uh, destruction that has taken place there. Um, and uh, just a final remark, all those uh, nuclei are characterized by narrow, picturesque streets we all love and we all like to walk on. But um, in numerous cases, the streets uh, have been blocked after the earthquake uh, with uh, rubble. And uh, it is characteristic that um, in the areas, uh, in those, uh, in the centers uh, of uh, both Gaziantep and um, Antakya, even though in other areas, all the, um, uh, remainings have been uh, removed. In this case, we could see still uh, the parts of the buildings that have collapsed. Uh, so it is uh, it causes a difficulty in the escape of the inhabitants. We can see here again all the remaining parts of uh, the buildings on the streets, and uh, this is uh, the case of uh, Gaziantep. And um, so this is something that uh, has to be also taken into account. And I would like to thank the organizers, our colleagues uh, that were participating to the mission and these um, uh, presentations, and of course the sponsors of the missions and the Turkish colleagues that uh, took care of us. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>